Jonas Vengegaard has cracked Taddy Pogacar on the climb of the Mont Ventoux. Last time one of the yellow jerseys was on Mont he was running. Will you be running tomorrow? I hope not. Stage 11, perhaps the most hotly anticipated of this Tour de France. Nearly 200 kilometers between Sorg and Malocène with two climbs of the iconic Mont Ventoux. But before the fireworks on the Giants of Provence, there was already a big battle to get into the breakaway. A fast and furious start in much warmer conditions. The intermediate sprint came early between two minor climbs, but the pace was too high for most of the sprinters. The riders covering 47 kilometers in the first hour with the world champion on the attack. Julian Alaphilippe is on one of those days. This is a bit of a mission. 13% on this climb. The first climb was short but steep, and Nairo Quintana was unable to keep pace with Alaphilippe. More riders, though, now attacking from the peloton. Alaphilippe scooping up maximum points at the sprint to help protect the green jersey of his teammate, Mark Cavendish. He was then happy to let a few chasers bridge across. So good situation there for Mark Cavendish. None of his rivals were able to pick up a significant amount of points in that intermediate sprint. Alaphilippe joined by Dan Martin, Anthony Perez and Pierre Roland. Four men in the lead, followed by a chase group of around a dozen riders, including Benoit Cosnefoy, Greg Van Avermaet, and three men from Trek Segafredo, Julian Bernard, Balko Malema, and Kenny Ellisond. Wout Van Aert was the highest placed on GC, some 27 minutes down on Tadej Pogacar. Well, after the day's second climb, the leaders had a gap of around a minute on the chasers. The peloton at two minutes back, meanwhile, and being driven along by the Ineos Grenadiers. They were working for their leader, Richard Carapaz. Still 120 kilometers to go as the men at the front tackled the first category one climb of the day, the Col de la Liguière. And at the top of the climb, it's going to be Dan Martin who takes the summit of the Col de la Liguière. They've been behind for a long time, but it looks now like they are finally going to reach the back of this group of riders. The Van Aert group catching the Alaphilippe group as they approach the foot of the Von 2 for the first time. 16 riders in the lead with five minutes in hand over the peloton. And going on to the climb from Sault for just the second time in Tour de France history. Julien Alaphilippe who attacks now. Alaphilippe on the hunt for more King of the Mountains points and upping the tempo around halfway up the climb. Only six riders were able to stay with him. Van Aert, Bernard, Ellison, Perez, Luke Durbridge and Sandra Merisa. Just before the summit, Malema managed to drag his way back into the lead group, making it eight men up at the front. There goes Julien Alaphilippe. Does he fancy some polka dots? He's going to give it a go. Alaphilippe reaches the top. Of the Von 2 for the first time, 10 points in the pocket. Four minutes fifty-five. The gap over the back. Four fifty-five. We're only just inside 5k to the Mont Ventoux for the final time. Julian Bernard leads, and his job is done. Huge attack now. This is Kenny Ellison, the Frenchman, as he goes clear now on the lower slopes of the Mont Ventoux. And here goes Wout van Aert as he attacks Alaphilippe and he attacks Balka Mollema. Wout van Aert dreaming of a stage win in the Tour de France.
Paddy Pogaccia. How is he feeling? His face is poker face. Ben O'Connor here, he's gone so deep. He's getting caught from riders from behind. Now he looks like he's starting to crack. That the best form of defense is to go on the attack. Here goes the white jersey. Jonas Vengegaard goes on the move. What has this young Danish rider got in the legs? Karapas and Uran don't have the response. Jonas Vengegaard has cracked Taddy Pogaccia on the climb of the Mont Ventoux. This is the crest of the Mont Ventoux for the second time. Wout van Aert goes over the top, gets himself set. The stage win is down at the bottom of the descent. Wout van Aert is going to ride in here to the race finish with an emotional moment. He turns around, he gets himself set with a 32 and a half kilometer lone breakaway. It's four wins in the tour. Wonderful Wout. Well done, Trek Segafredo. Second and third to Elison de Mollema. Jonas Vengegaard is the first rider to crack the yellow jersey and now Taddy is going to say to him, well, you tried, but I'm still going to beat you on the stage. Personally, it was, it was really hard to, to come in, my, in this tour on a proper level. And the first... Uh, the first week we had so many bad luck with the with the team. Even today we, we lost again uh, Tony Martin in a crash. This is so nice that uh, yeah, if you keep motiv be being motivated and you keep believing it, then someday it will work out. So really proud. Maybe it's my best victory ever. Van Aert taking his fourth win on the Tour de France. Mont Ventoux still belongs to the Belgians after Thomas de Gent's win at Chalet Renard in 2016. Pogaccia put under a bit of pressure by Vingegaard, but he extends his advantage to 5 minutes and 18 seconds. O'Connor slips down to fifth. Cavendish had no trouble beating the time cut today. He stays in the green jersey ahead of Michael Matthews. No points for Quintana, but he remains in polka dots ahead of Wout van Aert. Pogaccia still leads Vingegaard in the youth classification with Aurelien Pahipantra nearly 25 minutes back in third. Our focus now switches to stage 12 in Nîmes where Cavendish has a chance to match Eddie Merckx.